All right, we are back to the other episode. Uh, last time was very, very interesting. So we say karibu yet again to this episode. Because it's a continuation of what we were talking about last week. Part two of Youth in Christ. And uh, we had interesting conversations about marriage. Uh, you know, some of the things youth are thinking differently. You know, vasectomy has become a, re a real thing. IVF, where people don't even need a man. Ladies don't even need a man. The doctor can w work his magic to get you <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> and so, all these things. And we said that because it was the idea of God, mm -hmm. we, we, we need to, there's some things that cannot change. But we said well, there are some things that we need to change even as the body of Christ to be able to reach the youth better. But before we delve into more uh, uh, top uh, ideas and uh, uh, the topic of the day, uh, I want to allow my guests to say hi to you and welcome you back, you know, uh, to this episode. So please say hi to our viewers. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we are glad to have you. Mm -hmm. And for sure, you're going to be blessed by listening to this episode. Absolutely. And so it is great to have you join us and be with us. And so I'll allow Jafet now mm -hmm. to take us through, uh, from his perspective, some of the things he feels are benefits of someone being young, but they're in Christ. So that we get away from this mentality that if you're young and you're in you know, salvation and you love uh -huh. God, you're missing out. You know, uh -huh. we need to get this going. So tell us, what are some of the benefits you can tell that young person looking at us? And even a parent who is telling their child to, you know, go to church or to know God. What are some of the things you can tell them? These are the things that, you know, will be a blessing to your life. Okay. Thank mm. you so much. Mm. Uh, I will start with life. Mm. You see, and this, not, this does not even apply to youths, but it also includes the youths. Uh, there is no life without Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he gave us only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And when you research deeper on that eternal life, it's not really, it's part of it going to heaven and having a glorious eternity of the life on earth, but it's not really only tied to that. Uh, the eternal life, when you look at the Greek, is a kind of a luxuriant kind of a life, a perfect kind of a life, a life of bliss. So I believe to the youths and even to everyone, uh, one of the benefits of being in Christ is having life. Having life in the sense that uh, even the Bible says in the book of John, when you read John chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. Like in Christ was life. That tells you there is no life without Christ. Uh, this life is a life of peace. A life of, the Bible says we have not received the spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Do you know how many people don't have sound mind? Mm. And this is just a result of not having Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look at the mad men walking around. Mm -hmm. that's, lack of a sound, that's lack of a sound mind. And that's exactly what Jesus is giving. The Bible says you've, you've been given the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So I would say one of the things that you get by having Jesus, and you see, even the Bible says you should bear your yoke while you're young. Uh, there are benefits. I, I love listening to Apostle Joshua Selman, and he loves saying uh, he was giving the he was breaking people into age brackets. That from zero to was it zero to twenty five, you should have gotten born again. You should have this is the stage to learn, uh, understand yourself, understand your purpose, understand your calling, and one of the ways of understanding your calling and your purpose is through getting born again because God has created all of us with divine purposes, with divine callings. Yeah, so I would say the things that we get with Jesus is life. We get peace. The Bible says we shall have peace that surpasses human understanding. You see, we are in a world that is at times difficult. Mm. Or without Jesus, the world is difficult. Mm. There are things going around. Uh, if you are a student, you are a young person, you are in school, the Bible says mine are the heads and not the tails. Do you know you see, pastor, you understand that there is no middle ground. It's either you are born again, it's either you are of Christ, or you are not. And when you are not of Jesus, you are definitely, maybe you, I, I, I won't say you are of the devil, but the enemy has, he has a leeway to affect your life. 
And of course, if the enemy is affecting your life, he's affecting it negatively. Uh, there are many people who have gone astray, and uh, there are many people who have gone astray through the friends that they have, and they have done so in a young age. Even if you look at many people who are in church, many people who are doing great things, it's people that their parents inculcated them to Jesus Christ when they were young, and they grow with that thing. Yeah, even they are looking at the Bible still in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says uh, the earth was desolate. Before, the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and I believe there was some space there where when the enemy was thrown down, he came and did all the mess, and the earth was desolate and void. Uh, that's a life without Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so God had to come in and make something and restore the world into something beautiful. Yeah, so a life of desolation, a life that's void, is a life that's without Jesus. And a young person without Jesus is just desolate. Mm. He doesn't have life. All right. Yeah. So we, without God, you're void, you're empty. Exactly. God brings in life into you. Exactly. And you're able to grow. Exactly. One of the things that the young people have been um, accused of, actually there was a survey that was conducted in a university, and actually 70% mm -hmm. of the students said that they are willing to do anything provided they know money can come. Uh -huh. And so we're asking That's ourselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're asking ourselves why uh, that we say we are 80% uh, as a nation, we are Christians, uh -huh. and we have rampant corruption. All this mess. <laughs> so it means that in this big percentage, uh -huh. many of us could be involved in the same corruption uh -huh. that is happening. Uh -huh. And so the big question is, the whole mentality of get rich quick. Uh -huh. That's why everybody is thinking, oh, you know, if online trading is the thing and mm -hmm. nothing against online trading because there are some people it's working for them mm -hmm. who are using the right channels, uh -huh. betting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, sponsors, <laughs> you know, at the, you know, sponsors and Ben 10, you know, and all these kind of things where, you know, ladies are willing even to, you know, go with anybody, whether it's the age of their father or grandfather, mm -hmm. provided they are getting money, mm -hmm. they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, materialism uh -huh. uh, uh, and how you can uh, avoid that path uh -huh. and still, you know, get somewhere in life. And actually, you know, because money is not bad. It's the love of money that exactly. is the root of all evil. All it is not money that is the root of all evil. Let's talk about, you know, uh, materialism. Uh -huh. Thank you for that question. Yes. I'm thinking, uh, you see, I believe the word of God answered all things. Mm. Every question that we have, you see, about money can mm. be the solution thereof can be found in the word of God. Mm. Uh, allow me to talk about wealth and prosperity because there is the right way to achieving anything in this world. And I believe Jesus is that right way. Uh, let me talk about principles. They are biblical principles that if you follow them, you are guaranteed to get in the right direction. And unfortunately, many people don't know these principles. Uh, and this question of the issue, you know, I was in the university, and life can really be tough. And I believe this is because, you see, uh, it's good to have Jesus, especially we are talking to young people. It's good for them to have Jesus now because how they live their lives will affect how their children will be living. So uh, I believe the issue of sponsors, many a times people can be lacking. Yeah, and it's wrong to have a sponsor. Uh, allow me just say that uh, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 that God gives us the power to create wealth. Yeah, God gives us the power to create wealth. Even the Bible says in, is it 2 Corinthians that, that God became poor? Is it 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9? Yes, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. That Jesus became poor, that he was rich, but he became poor so that through his poverty we might become rich. Uh, God is after making us rich. God is not happy with us being poor. God is not happy with us going to all those negative sources of money, doing all the wrong things to have money. And I just want to say that uh, you can get money through doing the right thing. You can get money through fulfilling your purpose. You see there are people who are like for this, what we are doing right here, there's someone shooting us. There's someone behind the camera shooting us this video. Uh, when you do, uh, you get money by solving a problem. Yeah, so there are many good ways of 
there are many good ways of having money. Money is not a bad thing. The love of money is, as you said, mm. is the wrong thing. Mm. There are many good ways of having money. Don't compromise to get money. It's wrong to compromise because God has already blessed you. The Bible mm. says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, mm. who does not stand in the way of sinners, who does not sit in the seat of mockers. So you see, there's blessings right there by walking the ways of God. I believe if one would give himself to biblical principles, in fact, the Bible says the end of the diligent shall rule, Proverbs 12, verse 24. The Bible says uh, that lazy hands makes one poor, but diligent, ha diligent hands, they bring wealth, they bring richness. So I would just say there are good ways of having money. One of them is just be diligent. There's no, there's no need. You know, they, they normally say the end just justifies the means. Uh, why get money? through the wrong means and let me not mention names uh, why get money through the wrong means and then regret later for me you would rather suffer while you go through the right channels and have a fulfilling life and a great life in the future so uh, just God wants you rich mm. God's, God wants you prosperous and he has outlined ways in his world where you can be prosperous one of them is just being diligent if we are, we are talking to young people, we are young people. Like for me, I'm an engineer. I play the keyboard. Just look at it. When the Bible even says that God is giving us the ability to produce wealth, uh, that is in line moving with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be able to pinpoint to you uh, the avenues or the loopholes through which you can fill those loopholes and get money in the result. Yeah. Amazing. I like it that... Uh, you've mentioned that money is a solution or a product uh, after you know solving someone's yeah, problem. Yeah, you get money by solve, providing mm. a solution to you an know. Issue. Yeah. So the issue is focus on solutions. Yeah. And more than that, of course, uh, getting skills uh -huh. that will offer this solution. Uh -huh. And be patient. Yes, yes. If you are having food tonight, mm. it's okay to have food. It's okay to have one shot. Uh, if you are diligent and working the right ways, next year you won't be having one shot. Next year, you won't be just having food. You'll have more than enough. Just, just be patient. There's no need to drive, to drive a Land Cruiser only to end your life in suicide because of the bad things that you've done in driving this Land Cruiser. Mm. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I think that's a very excellent point and even a good place to end and emphasize on that life is about seasons. Yeah, exactly. There are some people who think because I'm suffering today, uh -huh. tomorrow I'll not live well. Uh -huh. So you even think I am where I am uh -huh. because I am, I've slept hungry, I'm a poor person, uh -huh. but where you are does not indicate who you are and uh -huh. where you and can be. You going. Yeah. yeah, so th I think that's an important place to uh, end and also to understand that overall it is God who enables us. Uh -huh. It is not who you are yourself who give yourself health and life uh -huh. and even ideas. So your ideas will be fueled by the grace of God. Uh -huh. So let's depend on Christ. Uh -huh. Youth in Christ. Are you in Christ? Do you want to receive Christ in your life? We give you this opportunity as we end this interesting discussion that we've had about youth in Christ. So if you want to receive Christ, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you today. Cleanse my sin with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Send me the Holy Spirit to be my lead and my guide. Mm -hmm. From today, I believe my life will never be the same again. If you made that prayer, know You're that you again. are born again, oh. without a doubt. Join a Bible-believing church. Welcome at PCA Dome if you can. We have our youth services, our normal services. We will help you to grow in faith and we'll be able to walk with you. It is a joy and delight to have you watch us. Until next time, this has been Tubonga Show. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.